a look at what's new in watchOS 5.1.2. So of course, the big news with watchOS 5.1.2 is the presence of this right here, the ECG app on Apple Watch. The ECG app will record an electrocardiogram right on your Apple Watch using the digital crown. Now you'll have to enter your birthday first. You have to be over 22 years of age. No geriatric jokes, please folks spare them. So how does the ECG app on the Apple Watch work? First of all, it gathers electrical pulses from the digital crown and the rear optical sensor. It then checks the pulses to get your heart rate to see if the upper and lower chambers of your heart are in rhythm. If they're not in rhythm, that's AFib or atrial fibrillation. And as you may have guessed, that's not a good thing. When running an ECG on the Apple Watch, you'll see one of two results. The sinus rhythm, which is a normal beating pattern, or AFib, which is an irregular beating pattern. In fact, it's the most common form of serious irregular heart condition, AKA arrhythmia. And while it's possible that the app could present some false positives, you probably wanna go ahead and get checked out by a doctor if it tells you you have AFib, just in case. Now there are other things to consider, such as low or high heart rate. If you have a heart rate under 50 or over 120, it could affect the ECG app's ability to check for AFib and recording is considered inconclusive. Now inconclusive results mean that the recording can't be properly classified. And this can happen for a lot of different reasons. Uh, some of the reasons are not resting your arm properly or having your Apple Watch worn too loose. So just keep that in mind. Now there are some things you should know before using the ECG app and Apple outlines this in their documentation right here. So number one, the ECG app cannot detect a heart attack. So if you're feeling chest pain, pressure, all that, call emergency services immediately. It also cannot detect blood clots, stroke, or any other heart related conditions. So keep that in mind. This is to detect for AFib and AFib only at this point. All right, so to take your first ECG, you wanna open the ECG app and make sure that the watch is on the proper arm that you have configured. So I have it configured for my left wrist. The watch is on my left wrist. Tap OK. You'll see this little heart logo here, and it's going to tell you what to do. So just hold your finger, the tip of your finger, on the digital crown and keep it there for 30 seconds. And you'll see your heart, your heartbeat pattern just like that. Uh, so it's measuring that in real time and recording that to the health app. Now, a couple of things to keep in mind, you wanna make sure that your watch is secure and snug on your wrist, and you wanna make sure that you have it resting like I have it resting like this on a table or something. Now, if you remove your finger from the digital crown while the ECG is in progress, it's gonna do that. It's basically gonna rewind all the way back to the beginning, and you're gonna to have to do the whole thing over again. So keep your finger nice and snug on the digital crown for the full 30 seconds in order to record the ECG. Now I've sped this up a little bit. Obviously it's going a little faster than real time. All right, so there we go. Oh, I'm good. Sinus rhythm, that's a good thing. Uh, I was kind of worried about that at first. Just that was my, that literally was my first ECG that I've ever done with the Apple Watch. You guys saw it live. So it will record the results in the health app. You'll see here the screen, all the ECGs taken are stored in the health app. Uh, so you can see uh, that ECG that I just took, tap on it, get some more details. And if you really want some details, you can just tap on the button that says export a PDF for your doctor. And that will allow you to pan around and see the full scope of the ECG, just like that. It even tells you the time, tells the person's birth date, all that. And basically it tells you that this is like a one lead ECG. This is akin to a one lead ECG. At the hospital, they have multiple leads that they can put on you. You know, all those little things that stick on your chest and your arms and things like that to get a more accurate depiction of your heart rhythm with regard to the, of the upper and lower chambers of your heart. Now let's continue to weave the ECG app into this whole demonstration here. If you go into the heart section in the watch app, you're gonna notice the ability to set up irregular heartbeat or I'm sorry, irregular rhythm notifications. So you can go in and the Apple Watch will actually alert you. It will monitor occasionally whether AFib is occurring with your Apple Watch. You can set this up, have to enter your birthday again. <laughs> yeah, you gotta do that again. And then have you been diagnosed with AFib? No, okay. So when you're sitting still, the Apple Watch will occasionally look at your heartbeat to check for irregular rhythm and it will send you an alert to let you know that, hey, we detected potentially a sign of AFib. You should probably contact a medical professional. 
And again, it gives you some additional reminders. So now you just tap turn on notifications and you're good to go. You can feel good knowing that your Apple Watch is looking out for you. But it's not all about the ECG app on watchOS 5.1.2. The infograph watch faces now get additional complications. So that means that the complications you used to be able to use like mail, remotes, messages, maps, news, phone, find my friends, uh, home, you can now get those on the infograph watch faces. And no surprise, there's also a new ECG complication so you can jump right into the ECG app and check your heart rhythm. That's super handy if that's something you like to do on a regular basis. So you just tap it, it loads up like that. Super simple, super easy. Another new feature is found in Control Center. So if you scroll all the way to the bottom, you're gonna notice walkie talkie availability. So this handy little toggle allows you to quickly switch on or off walkie talkie availability so you're not surprised by a message in what could be an awkward or embarrassing situation. This allows you to outright prevent that, which is a good thing, right? Now I'm not able to demonstrate this, but when you achieve daily maximum points in a day during an activity competition, you'll receive special notifications and animated celebrations. And lastly, you now have direct access to supported movie tickets, coupons, and reward cards in the wallet when tapped to a contactless reader. So ladies and gentlemen, that has been a look at what's new in watchOS 5.1.2. What's your favorite new feature? Let me know down below in the comments and also thumbs up if you appreciate this video. This is Jeff with 9to5Mac.